Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program Teacher Certification Course. Try saying that 10 times as fast as you can. Uh, if you're joining us here in uh, uh, the Peaceful Solution uh, headquarters in uh, Clyde, Texas, right outside of Abilene, you can be seated. And wherever you're joining us from afar, including Jupiter, Saturn, or wherever else you dwell, Hope you're enjoying the weather on Mars. I heard it was about 200 today. So um, we we left off on chapter three. Um, let's see, what would that be? I have a responsibility to myself. Was that the name of the chapter? Okay. And we're in the responsibility unit. If you're joining us online, you can go ahead and uh, go to the top of the Facebook page. There's a there's a, a little uh, section there shows you the manuals just click on it there's five manuals there we're on the fifth manual the responsibility unit of the peaceful solution and we're uh, tackling a very uh, sensitive subject uh, we're going to continue on from last class matters of the heart and uh, that's where we're going to pick up tonight again um, now I do want you to know that when you're teaching mixed company if you're in a mixed company class you have boys and girls you do want to be careful about the subject content you know one thing that really bothers me about the school system and uh, uh, well other entities they oftentimes when they talked about sex education in school they would bring a man and a woman in there together and they would do a demonstration you know with how to put on a condom and all these other things you know and they would have you know the boys and the girls and it just turned into one big silly laugh fest nobody took anything seriously everyone was joking and giggling and you know they weren't taking any of it seriously and it made a lot of people very uncomfortable actually a lot of girls and possibly even some of the boys felt very uncomfortable on that subject you know being spoken about you know in the same class so we have to be careful you know about what we say in the peaceful solution when we're teaching but <clears throat> I've also been a, a big proponent of not pussyfooting around in other words not not sugarcoating the peaceful solution you know when we when we think of peace I know sometimes people think you know uh, hippies flowers Volkswagen <laughs> you know uh, pot smoke coming out of the van <laughs> you know Cheech and Chong you know kind of kind of ideas of peace or or sometimes they think peace is just uh, getting along with everybody and you know these kind of things but you know peace sometimes requires us to teach the kind of subject matter that we're teaching right now about STDs how to avoid them about uh, unwanted pregnancies how to avoid those uh, very sensitive type subjects you know we got to be real with it we can't act like these things are not taking place we're in a real world right now and we're in a real battle for our lives right now you know we got we got people coming into the public school system uh, with drag queen story time <laughs> okay teaching children uh, men in dresses teaching children about sex education or reading them books and putting all kinds of really strange ideas into children's mind and most of these people are pedophiles that are coming into the schools and they're being allowed in the schools by the school systems now if that hurts your feelings <laughs> you know if if you can't hack reality you probably need to tune out you know but we need to talk about these things we need to be real and we need to know how do we deal with these situations when it comes to the peaceful solution character education program how do I deal with it when I'm in a situation like that or I know something like that how do I explain that to the children when the school's teaching them one thing and we're coming behind them and telling them something completely different? And then their parents might be telling them something completely different from what the school and the peaceful solution is telling them. So, you know, we really have to be, we're walking a thin line, okay? So, but we have to be realistic too. And uh, that's, I've always believed in telling it the way it is without without getting too graphic or anything 
Okay, so let's go over. We're going to go, we got to look at the lesson plan first before we start. I think we were on page 54, um, or 55 is actually where we left off. Oh, wait a minute, I got the wrong book. 55 in the responsibility unit. Okay, matters of the heart. Um, but before we get into that, let's go back to LP3. Let's see, LP3. E, step number seven. Then we're going to go over that one more time uh, to refresh our minds what we're doing here. Okay, so explain to students that they can also demonstrate a responsibility to themselves when they control their emotions. Although it's normal at their age to become, to become interested in members of the opposite sex, premarital sex is a dangerous and irresponsible choice that results in many negative consequences. There's, there's other words they use for premarital sex. They also call it fornication. Uh, you, can look up, uh, you can look up the word fornication in the dictionary. It'll probably give you all kinds of other synonyms that go with it. But premarital sex is relations before you're married. And it's not just talking about young boys and girls or adolescents. It's talking about any age. Okay, so, you, you know, sometimes we tend to think, yeah, those children, you know, they shouldn't be doing stuff like that. That should be for people that are 18 and over, <laughs> you know. Well, let me ask you a question. What makes it any different if you're 18 or 21? Does it somehow uh, make you immune from the sexually transmitted disease? Does it make you immune from the unwanted pregnancy that ends in abortion oftentimes? No, it doesn't. So remember, this is talking about all ages. So assign fit pages 54 to 57 for homework, it says. Okay, so let's go over to page 54. <clears throat> and uh, I read page 54, and I showed how, just to go, kind of briefly go over how, uh, you know, these emotions, you know, it says, what should I do with all these pent-up emotions now that I now that I like girls or now that, the young girl likes boys when she's a certain age. The peaceful solution says that we need to control them. Okay, we need to control those emotions. That doesn't mean you can't talk about your feelings. You can go to a trusted authority figure, your parents, and see who you should be talking to about these things. Girls, go to your mother. Boys, go to your father. And talk to them about these things. You know, they, they have a lot of experience themselves uh, dealing with these kind of issues. It says, you have an obligation and a responsibility to yourself and to the object of your affection to practice self-control. Okay, so, but the society, as we learn, doesn't make this easy to do, you know, because they make it look like it's normal. On TV shows, songs, commercials, movies, magazines, and music videos, music st movie stars and singers all act sexy, and they're known in addition to their talent for their sex appeal. You know, um, just seems like it goes with the territory. You know, they're in Hollywood, right? Uh, the author of the program likes to call it Follywood. You know, Follywood means, you know, uh, foolishness because it's leading people to nothing but death, diseases, uh, marital problems, family problems, uh, divorce, etc. You know, it's just a, it's just a mess. These things that they're showing are, are really causing a lot of problems. Cause they're, and they could actually turn it around by showing, you know, uh, responsible behavior, you know. Cause I've seen plenty of movies that didn't have one ounce of sex in them that I thoroughly enjoyed. In fact, today I was reading that uh, the, uh, gener is it called Generation Z now? Gen, Gen Z or something? Gen anyway, this generation right here. They actually prefer no sexual content. 50, I think it was something like 58% of the young people said, we don't even care for that. You know, we're tired of it. Uh, you know, I remember going to the movies when I used to go to movies, um, and it seemed like every movie had the same storyline, the, story, the same plot, you know. So you, you get introduced to the character. First, they'd show you the man or the woman, and then, they, you know, they called the hero or the heroine. And then within 30 minutes, they went to bed. <laughs> right? 
It's like they went to bed, they just met each other, not even married, and they just went to bed within 30 minutes of the film. It was like, that was like in every single movie, it seemed like, you know? And it seemed like they didn't have any other great ideas, you know, in Hollywood there, Follywood, whatever you want to call it. Um, they were encouraging this. Remember what I told you about the sexual revolution in the last class? These things were done purposely, you know, because well, we don't need to pent our emotions up. We need to just let them all hang out. You know, we need to do what we want to do. If it feels good, do it, you know? So, but when the AIDS virus came around in the mid eighties and Rock Hudson died of AIDS, people were like, whoa, wait a minute. There's consequences for these things we're doing, right? And they got scared, <laughs> which they should be. They should have been scared before they did it. <laughs> um, you know, would you be afraid if you knew you were walking in the woods and there was a, there was a, a well, what are those Gila monsters? What do they call those things? Gila. Not Gila monster. They like to swallow things whole. It's like a lizard. Yeah, like a Komodo dragon. Like, would you, would you, would you walk into the woods knowing there's a Komodo dragon in there? I mean, unless you were one of those animal hunters or animal guys that wanted to do risk do risk taking things but i mean i wouldn't you know i wouldn't have to be i wouldn't want to be dealing with something like that well you know what you should think the same thing about uh or you know what about swimming in a pool of sharks you know would you want to do that <laughs> it's the same thing you know going out there playing around you know like hollywood is showing you you know you go out there and do that it's like swimming in a pool of sharks you know you're going to get bit by some kind of std and some other problems so on page 55, let's go ahead and uh, put up the first visual for everybody at home. This is where I left off. Uh, remember I talked about, they called it free love, the sexual revolution. You know, they called it free love, and I showed that, well, it's not free, you know. There's 19 million new cases of STDs or STIs each year now with a cost of uh, 12 to $20 billion, and that's in 2006 U.S. dollars, so you can probably call that $30 billion with inflation. And then uh, 63 uh, million 459,781 abortions. You know, that's a small country right there of, of little children that have been slaughtered in this uh, free love that we're promoting here in Follywood. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the next slide. And I think that's where we're going to pick up on page 55. Next slide, please. Okay, so under the subtitle, Matters of the Heart, on the top of page 55, with sex literally everywhere and none of its consequences broadcast with equal fervor, it's even more important to become responsible and learn how to control your feelings. Before you make a decision, you will regret. Using self-control will help you avoid getting into a sexual situation that you are not ready for. And remember... Remember the cartoon they show here, you know, or not the cartoon, but the, the visual here that they show the two girls watching uh, television. She's like, what, well, what's on TV tonight? Oh, you know, there's uh, STDs in the city or how I got herpes. You know, it comes on at 8 o'clock. You know, that's, that's the reality. You know, that would be true reality TV. The Kardashians is not reality TV, okay, because they know there's a camera on them, so they're not acting like they really would have. They didn't think there was a camera, so that's not even reality. True reality TV would show the diseases, the uh, aborted fetuses, the candy apple babies that are burned with salt as they rip them out of their mothers. That would be that would be reality TV. Okay, that would be the aborted fetuses, piles of them. That would that would be the reality TV. All right, but they won't show that. It's a bummer. It's a downer. Nobody wants to see that. Okay, go ahead and put the. Uh, next slide up it says although the media makes it appear that when you like someone you should automatically have sex with them with him or her this is far from the truth you have an obligation and a responsibility to yourself and to others to control your emotions having a crush or interest in someone does not give you the right to touch him or her in a sexual way in fact you really care about some if you really care about someone you should show respect by not encouraging risky behavior it's up to you to stop and think about the consequences of premarital sex and that's where the peaceful solution comes in remember the stop acronym you know s 
stands for stop. Get those emotions under control. You know, you might have the urge. You might think you're feeling love. <laughs> it's not love. I told you in the last class, if you have an urge to touch someone that you shouldn't be touching, that's called lust. And lust is just desire. It's a desire to do something. You need to control that desire, you know, because you know that you shouldn't do that, okay? And you have an obligation to protect that person if you really care about them. And you have an ab obligation to protect yourself. Okay, and uh, uh, think. You know, if you stop, get that emotion under control, get that lust under control, then you can think clearly about the situation, you know, and you can think about what your options are in that situation, okay? And then you can proceed by keeping your hands to yourself, like your teacher told you to do in kindergarten, you know? Or, you know, you can learn, you can not, you know, you can be like that horse, that unbridled horse, you know, and just do whatever you want to do and uh, touch whoever you want to touch, you know? So when you're at the office one day and you touch that girl that's uh, typing that document, hey, how you doing today? <laughs> you know, put your hand on her. And then she slaps you with a $200,000 sexual, sexual uh, what do they call that? Sexual what? Harassment. harassment. Yeah, so thank you. You guys are pretty sharp. Uh, sexual harassment lawsuit, you know, because you put your hands on somebody that you shouldn't have put your hands on. Remember the rules that we learned in kindergarten are really life rules. Keep your hands and feet to yourself. Remember? <laughs> just, it's a simple rule that we should always follow. Now, if you're married, well, it's a different story. But even then, <laughs> there's times to touch and there's times not to, you know. And we can't force ourselves on people, you know. Um, yes, you can rape your own wife, okay. I know you might, th might think, well, she belongs to me, so I can do whatever I want with her. No, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. That person is an, a human being and has a right to say no. Okay, so we, we always have to remember the peaceful solution applies in all relationships, okay? Uh, um, what did we learn in the very early, early uh, peaceful solution manual, you know, about, you know, not touching without permission, okay? Very simple. Okay, put the, can you put the next slide back up? So we went through the STOP acronym. So... <clears throat> now, I wanted to go over another article with you from Psychology Today. Um, it's uh, from 2023. It says, new report finds most teens watch or online pornography. Now, why is this important for you to know? Because you need to know that the adolescents today are getting their ideas about sex from porno that they're watching on their phones mainly iPads, phones, whatever they're watching these things on. Some of the things that stick out in the article, it says most teen girls as well as boys are viewing pornography on a regular basis, even during school, when they're not supposed to have their phones, okay? Uh, multiple studies indicate uh, porn's negative effects on youth, sexual attitudes and behavior, and you're going to learn through this article that they're seeing things being done in pornography that are giving them some very, very, very violent ideas about sex. Schools have a responsibility to help address the issue. Yes, they do. They have a responsibility to teach the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. If they would do that, then they could be thoroughly educated like you're being educated right now on how to avoid these things, okay? in a way that's not going to be, um, uh, what would you call it? You know, not standing there with a chalkboard, do not have sex, <laughs> right? No, that's not abstinence education, you know. That's part of it, <laughs> but you got to couple it with this. You got to couple it with this. You got to show them how not to do it. You got to show them why not to do it. You got to show them the benefits of not doing it and the consequences of doing it, like we're doing here. Okay? Very simple. Okay, put the, you can put the visual back up. Anybody who cares about the healthy, this is the article from Psychology Today, anybody who cares about the healthy sexual and character development of children should read this report. Teens and Pornography 
issued earlier this year by Common Sense Media. You can go to the next visual. Next visual. Okay, so continuing in that article, the finding that teens said they had viewed what appears to be rape, uh, choking, choking, you know, during sex, during these on porno. They watch rape scenes, choking, or someone in pain. Won't surprise anyone who has the need to, uh, what's that say, book? Read the book Pornland, How Porn Has Hijacked Our Sexuality by Gail Dines, a Wheelock College Sociology and Women's Studies professor. So this woman wrote a book about what children are seeing in pornography now. And this is the things that they're watching in pornography that are normal things. In more than two decades of speaking and writing about pornography, Dines finds that most women and some men, including parents, have no clue how violent and misogynist hardcore online pornography has become. In other words, they're not just showing them having sex anymore. They're actually showing them choking people, vi being violent with them, and everything else. And they're making it look like, well, that's just part of having sex. A 2007 content analysis, Aggression and Sexual Behavior in Best-Selling Pornography, examined uh, 50 of the most rented Internet videos. It found an average of 12 abusive acts, 12 abusive acts inflicted on female performers per scene. Per scene. Gang rape was common. The number of sexual partners ranged from 1 to 19 in one film. So this woman was, was with 19 different people in that film. Or the man was with 19 different women. Okay? And there was gang raping going on. More than one man. Okay? There was gang raping taking place. There was violence, hitting, choking, etc. So it's not just your, uh, uh, what do they call it? The old days, pornography, which was bad enough. Now it's very violent. Let's go to the next slide, please. Same article. It says, in England, a 2016 Middlesex University study of 11 to 16-year-olds found that more than half of the boys, 53%, thought Internet pornography is a realistic depiction of sex. They think that's how it really is. I think Chris told us uh, a few months ago, and, and I think I brought it up just a few classes ago, that remember the subconscious mind can't differentiate between fantasy and reality? You remember that? So when you're watching pornography, you're actually, you, you think, you don't know that it's just, it's, it, and it actually is real. It's not really, they're not faking it, <laughs> right? But your mind can't differentiate any be difference between fantasy and reality, your subconscious mind. So if, if the man's beating on the woman, right, or choking her or whatever, the subconscious mind is going to think that's a normal thing to do, I guess, right? So then when, you know, these, like you see here with these 53% uh, of these uh, uh, British boys think that's just part of it. That's just part of it, you know, when you, when you, when you, uh, when you have sex with your wife or your girlfriend, you beat her up. Okay, well, let's, this, is, uh, this is really twisted. It says, four out of ten girls thought Internet pornography is a realistic depiction of sex. And by the time they were 13, 40% of the boys said they wanted to copy behaviors they'd seen on porn sites. Okay, you see, this is the, this is the danger, okay, that they want to copy what they see. Okay, the, the copycats. You know, because remember, they think that it's normal. And they think, hey, that girl must like that. You know, that girl in the movie didn't do anything about it. So they must just like that. They must like to get beat up. It's kind of like in the movie where the guy slaps the girl, you know, across the face. And she's like, you know, and he's like, I did that because I love you, you know. <laughs> and then he takes her in his arms, you know. <laughs> she's got a black eye, you know. I did that because I love you, you know. Really? Remember what we talked about love the other day? That's a twisted idea of love. And I told you before, I saw on CNN, there was a guy, the, a guy killed us, they called it the, uh, 
Well, he killed his whole family. There's like eight people in his family. He killed every one of his family members. And some guy with a, you know, a real educated man with a bunch of degrees hanging on the wall behind him. You know, he's being interviewed by CNN. And they asked him, you know, why do people do things like that? Why do they kill their whole family like that? And the man said, well, it's because they love them and they don't want to live without them. <laughs> really? Wow. And twisted ideas on love out here. Okay, well, where'd they come from? Where'd they come from? It came from Follywood. Okay, it came from Follywood. It came from the from the from the romance novels and the uh, the uh, video games. You know where you could. Uh, what was that game back in the early days? Uh, that was that one where you stole cars. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto, where they had the secret you know, thing where you could uh, rape some girl, you know, during the game, you know, some kind of backdoor thing they had going there. Um, You know, just, this is where the ideas came from, okay? And it's a dastardly plan. It's a dastardly plan to destroy people's minds, okay? To make this kind of stuff look normal. And, And can you even believe that, you know, as parents, we really need to know what's coming on our home. Okay. You know, your child's buying a record or, you know, a a CD or a, or a video game or anything that's coming in that house, you know, a a video disc or whatever you need to be, you need to know before they even get it. What's the content. You have a duty to protect your children. You have a duty to protect your home, you know, because if, if it gets in, you know, you're the you're 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 supposed to be like the watchdog. Okay? And too many parents are saying now, well, my child, you know, he sits around, plays those games all day, he plays those violent games, and it's kinda like, well, who got it for him? Well, you know, I let him get it, but I didn't really know what it was. Well, now you do know what it is. Now you do know what it is. What are you gonna do? Well, I can't do anything, you know, because he'll he'll probably flip out and probably kill me like he wants to kill that guy in that game. You know, I mean that's how they think. You know, they get really, really upset, start punching holes in the wall. I've seen it. I've seen them do it. Okay? Then why? Because they got Angry Birds posters hanging on their, you know, on their wall. And they're playing violent video games and they're watching pornography. Most children are doing this. And you're a fool if you think yours ain't. You're a fool. Because every child, every child... Okay, every child has what they call, uh, they like to explore. And they all have this, this idea that, well, you know, I keep hearing from the adults that it's bad stuff, but really, is it really that bad? <laughs> Let me see. Let me just check it out. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> the author of The Peaceful Solution uh wrote a an article once, Israel Hawkins, about uh, buying your child a cell phone is signing a death warrant. That sounds that sounds pretty crazy. That sounds like way out there. Like really a death warrant? Well, if they're not educated in what you're learning right now and they're not taught and they're not warned and they're not shown and they're not educated thoroughly before you give them something like that, that's what they're going to get into. And I've seen it every time. And I don't care who they are. I've seen it every time. Okay? And you can think all you want right now. Oh, that wouldn't occur with my child, you know. Or, you know, I got some kind of parental controls on that. Nah, they have a way around all that stuff. <laughs> they got... They sell them all kinds of stuff online, you know, where they can block where their parents can't see stuff. Children are very, children are like, like prisoners in prison. When I, when I was in prison, they came up with everything, man. They could figure a way around everything and children are no different. Okay. So don't be foolish. Don't be like the Follywood fools, you know, educate your children. Okay. Uh, show them the dangers. Okay, let's go to the next, uh, let's see if I was, was I done with that visual? Okay. <coughs> so in the same article, I'm reading the article, it's called New Report Finds Most Teens Watch Online Pornography. 
Okay, now it says teens and pornography cites recent research uh, from 2021 showing that youth consumption of pornography is associated with increased sexual aggression, anxiety and depression, interpersonal relationship problems, you know, because their girlfriend doesn't like being choked, and dangerous sexual behaviors such as choking someone during sex. Okay? Um, this is this is horrible. Okay? It's bad enough that they're watching uh, and you know, I'm just going to say it. Um, well, no, I better not say it. I'm just family friendly. I've got to be careful about what I say, so I better control my my tongue. But I will say that um, I never really thought about... Now, let me skip that part. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay, it says... Unfortunately, sexually explicit content is no longer limited to pornography websites. That means parents need to look for tech that blocks porn on smartphones, tablets, and computers. Fortunately, it is now available. Even more important than external controls, however, is developing a child's internal control, their conscience. And that's where the peaceful solution comes in, you know. Now, children already know. They know it's wrong to be looking at it. They know it's wrong. You know how they know it's wrong? Because you don't know they're doing it, right? They're not watching it in front of you. You know, they wouldn't dare do that. So you know they know it's wrong. Their conscience is telling them you shouldn't be looking at that. Okay? So, but it's not enough for their conscience to bother them. You know, what we should be doing is showing them, son, daughter, here's why you don't want to look at that. Okay, and um, you know you have to teach them the peaceful solution. If you teach them the peaceful solution, there's nothing in here that's offensive to them. There's nothing in here that, that offends the boy or the girl <clears throat> in any way, shape, or form. Now, I remember a place in New York one time years ago told us, "Well, if you could take that one thing out of there, you know, in the peaceful solution, if you could take that one part out of there about uh, sex and uh, STDs, we could teach that here, you know." <laughs> well, sorry, we can't do that. And we won't do that. We're not going to water it down. Why do you think the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program hammers so hard on STDs and, un and, and, and uh, premarital sex? Why do you think it hammers so hard on that? Because most mental issues and most physical issues ailments, diseases are coming from that behavior. Hospitals, if you drive by the hospitals every day, the parking lots are full. They're full. But, you know, Grandpa Grandpa Joe, he had a heart attack. You know, he, he didn't have sex with anybody. He just had a heart attack. Yeah? Did you know that chlamydia gets in your arteries and scratches the arteries and clogs your arteries where you have a heart attack? Chlamydia is a sexually transmitted disease. Did you know that? That it causes heart attacks. Did you know that cancer is an STD? Yeah. Women get cervical cancer, right? Cervical cancer comes from an STD. See, they're not telling you everything. They're not telling you why the hospitals are full. They're only telling you, man, this is great. We're having fun in Follywood. You should join us. Yeah, you can join them. But we're just telling you, if you join them, here's what you can expect. So that way you can't say the peaceful solution. Why'd they water that down for me? They should have. T they didn't tell me anything about, you know, this, this, and this. They just told me peace, love, and joy. Right? Just get along with everybody. <laughs> no. We're here to teach reality. We're here to teach moral character. Okay? We're here to teach you how to avoid the traps that everyone in this world is falling into. And you know what? You know what else these STDs are causing? They're causing minds to degenerate. It gets to the brain to where someone's going to push a button Someone's going to push a nuclear button because their brain is confused. 
because people's brains are confused. They're going into schools with guns, shooting schools up. Well, well, I thought that's just because, you know, they got angry at somebody. Yeah? But why'd they get angry? And why couldn't they control that internal rage? What got to their brain? You know, remember Chris, uh, a few classes or a few months ago, he went in deep detail about that one uh, school shooter, and he did a great examination of all that man's bo- or that young man's past and showed all the different things that they didn't tell you on the evening news, right, when they talked about that school shooting up in Washington? Of course they didn't, because you know why? They're not educated like peaceful solution character education instructors are. We know what's causing people's brains to malfunction. We know what's causing uh, what they're putting in the food, what they're drinking in their water, what they're taking in through the soil. We know about the STDs in the atmosphere that's destroying the firmament. We know. We taught you all that. Okay? But no one on earth is telling you that. Okay? And they can't deny it. You know, I remember uh, reading in, uh, it was Fox News back in 2007, you know, it it said, uh, and this was after the author of The Peaceful Solution taught us in a seminar about this very subject. There was an article in Fox News not two weeks later saying that the coral reef were all dying of herpes. Herpes? I thought herpes was, well, it is an STD. So how'd the coral reef get it? Well, because human beings are around the coral reef. And guess what? STDs are in the water. And so that means when the water uh, evaporates, the STDs go up in the air, which we learned in an article out of San Antonio where they were testing the air quality and they found STDs in the air. Did you read about that? Or did you just giggle when you said, oh, come on, that sounds pretty crazy. No, they know it. They know it. But who's telling you? It's the peaceful solution that's telling you about it. Nobody else is talking about this. Okay? Then you have an obligation to share those things with your students. You have an obligation to educate them and encourage them to read the articles because they're out there. The studies are out there. We're not making this stuff up. Okay, so let's go to the next visual. Okay, same article. It, it was kind of a lengthy article, but man, was it a great article. I, I didn't even realize some of the stuff they're seeing. It says, unfortunately, sexually explicit content is no longer limited to pornography websites. That means parents need to look for tech that blocks porn. Did I just read this? Okay. <laughs> okay, let me read the second paragraph. I think I didn't read that whole thing. Even more important than external controls, is developing a child's internal control, their conscience. And you do that through teaching character education. That's what they will carry within them into the wider world. Through calm, clear explanations, parents and schools can help kids understand the reasons why they should not watch pornography. And man, that's a great endeavor to do so. That's a great endeavor to do that, to tell them not to do it. But that's not enough. You know, back in uh, 2006, 2005, I think President Bush uh, uh, required abstinence to be taught in Texas. And, you know, they still teach abstinence, as you're going to see. I think I got an article in here a little later. Um, They still teach abstinence, but, you know, it's just not enough to tell people to abstain from something, you know, to to not do something. You've got to couple it with the nuts and bolts of how to control yourself, how to stop and think and weigh out your options and proceed. You got to know what choices you have. You don't even know. You don't even begin to know what are my options until you're taught the peaceful solution. You really don't know. You know, uh, and I've seen all the other character education programs. I'm sorry. They do not even, they don't hold a candle to the peaceful solution. Okay. They don't even touch on any of this. You know, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, you know, by telling them they can't sleep with somebody. After all, isn't that love, you know, one love, <laughs> you know, one love, what do they call that? One love. I'm always looking at Michael for answers. <laughs> one love or what, what was that? Those posters they carry, you know, these sayings they come up with, you know, and 
it's it's the stuff. It's kind of like thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, you know, thoughts and prayers. Every time we have a school shooting, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. That's going to do it, right? Thoughts and prayers. I'm thinking about it. I'm praying about it, but I'm not doing anything about it. I'm not teaching anyone moral character education, step by step by step, like the peaceful solution does. I'm not doing anything to 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 make uh, to go to my school and say, "Hey, why don't we have this? Why don't we have this program in our school? Why don't we have the peaceful solution in our school? You know, this is what I learned from it. And man, this could could we only if you just teach it 20 minutes in the morning." You telling me you don't have 20 minutes in homeroom in the morning when school starts to teach this program? There's a lot of teachers that know they do, and they do. Okay? And it gets the day off to a great start. Children at first, you know, it's kind of like, you know, what that cod liver oil, you know, it's like, ugh, you know. But after a couple classes, man, they're like, man, I can see I need this program. I need, this is great. You know, I like talking about this stuff. And, uh, they open up and they see the benefit of it but you know we don't have time to do that right we don't have time to do that we got to prepare for the next test you know that next test is coming up (laughs) yeah well you know what your child is going to be tested too someone's going to come to them and ask them to sleep with them that's a test so how are they going to pass the test how are they going to pass the test when you haven't prepared them you know the only way to prepare to, to, to pass a test is preparation. You got to prepare. And the only way to prepare is to be educated, right? You got to be educated in these things. Okay, so let's go to the next visual. Let's talk a little bit about abstinence because, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of different definitions. I thought this was one of the better ones. This is from Cambridge Dictionary Online. It says, the fact of not abstinence is the fact of not doing something, usually something that is considered harmful, such as drinking alcohol or using a drug. It also means, abstinence also means the fact of not having sex or not having sex outside of marriage. <clears throat> now, let me tell you something. I have, I have been abstaining from drinking charcoal lighter for 61 years now. And it's working great. <laughs> I haven't had any problems. I haven't drank any charcoal lighter fluid, and I'm doing fine. I haven't got sick and because I've been abstaining from drinking lighter fluid. How about you? <laughs> Is it hard? Is it hard to abstain from drinking lighter fluid? Why is it not hard to abstain from drinking lighter fluid? Because you know it's going to hurt you. Right? You know. You're convinced. You believe. You believe without seeing, right? (laughs) You don't have to drink it to figure that out, do you? I don't know. Somebody might have tried it. I don't know. I hope not. Oh, wait a minute. Some of those guys in the circus, don't they put some kind of lighter fluid in their down their throat and blows blow those big old that's called stupidity that's Hollywood again circus man circus act and how many of them ended up burning their intestines out you know the fire went down or something who knows so I guess not everybody's abstained from that but I know I have and I've also abstained from catching bullets with my teeth have you have you abstained from that have, have you have you have you abstained from catching bullets with your teeth great because some people in the circus do that too i guess you know somebody shoots them at point blank rage and they try to catch it with their teeth now my teeth might look like i haven't but i have now why am i telling you that why am i telling you was it hard for you to abstain from catching bullets with your teeth and was it hard for you to abstain from not drinking charcoal fluid because you know it's going to hurt you The only reason we're not abstaining from sex before marriage is we don't believe it's going to hurt us. We don't believe it. We don't believe it. You know why? Because we always think we're going to get away with it. Well, you know that other person, they didn't use, I'll use three condoms instead of just one. 
I'll use that deluxe one they got down there at the 7-Eleven, you know, that super deluxe, you know, condom, you know. says nothing can penetrate this baby, except when I read the back, it said, you know, uh, this does not protect against STDs, dummy. <laughs> right? I think they call them condoms because it's a con and it's dumb if you believe it. Right? It's a con job and you're dumb if you believe it. And they're not even really trying to hide this thing about, you know, it's it's the people that come to your school that are that are deceived into thinking actually because I told I told you they come to these schools and they educate children, you know, use a condom. You know, they actually educate them in that. They even give out free condoms at schools and colleges. Because they think, well, you know, they're probably not going to abstain, so you know, I I better give them something just in case they don't. Oh, really? So so I should give my child a gun, right? Because, you know, he might want to, he might abstain from robbing the bank, but in case he can't control himself, I'll provide a gun for him to do it. You see how stupid that is? <laughs> we got a lot to learn. And I'm not trying to put anybody down. I just told you the sexual revolution that, that, they, that they flooded us with and you know, the first sexual revolution actually wasn't even in the 60s. It was in the roaring 20s. Do you know that? And, but it was really limited to the cities. The cities. Big cities. Because uh, the author of The Peaceful Solution said he never, nobody saw grandma's ankles. Not Nobody saw gra grandma's what? Grandma's ankles or grandma? Except grandpa, you know. And bathing suits back then? That's They were from the neck down to below your ankles. It was actually a bathing suit. It was a rubber suit, you know, so you wouldn't get wet. Um, <laughs> that was in the 20s. Do you know in 1934, the movie industry was so showing so much nudity and pornography, light pornography, that, that the Catholic Church had to actually step in and monitor movies. They had to. They had to. They had to. Uh, they hired a, uh, a Catholic Jesuit priest, a couple of them, to monitor the morality in movies. And they said, you know, you can't have a man and a woman in bed. That's forbidden. You can't show that. You couldn't. There were certain things that they couldn't show anymore because it was so bad. Did you know that they had that back in 1934? So this isn't anything new by any means, but now it's exploded. There's no holds barred, okay? And uh, it's horrible. I, as you can see right here, this pornography that these children are watching, they're not just watching two naked people, right? They're watching violence being performed while it's taking place. Let's go to the next slide. <coughs> now, abstinence... Although abstinence, now this is an article, I uh, uh, can't really read it, it's kind of small. <laughs> I can't hear you, but, but that's okay. Now this article about abstinence, um, it shows that although abstinence-only education is no longer federally funded, it is still maintained by many states in the United States. The problem is, if you don't educate about the other things like safe sex, contraception, and STI symptoms, they're sort of sitting ducks when they go out there to be sexual, Spencer said. They don't really know how to manage their sex lives in a healthy way at all, and they end up with more STIs and more unplanned pregnancies. In other words, you know, what he's saying is true. What he's saying is true. What he's saying is our abstinence is not working because we don't have the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. That's what he's saying. If we taught the peaceful solution, we wouldn't ha they'd already know how to control themselves. They wouldn't need the condoms. They wouldn't need all these, uh, they wouldn't be sitting ducks. What he's saying is, because we really don't have a plan and we don't really have a curriculum, you know, we got to give them these things because if we just tell them not to do it on the chalkboard, do not have sex. That's not enough. Back, go to the next slide. 
this this illustrates it perfectly. Here's their sex ed. Number one, do not have sex. Number two, see number one. Number three, see number two. Number four, see number three. They don't have a plan. There's no plan. There's no. There's no. There's no. There's no foundation. There's no foundation of moral character being laid. None. Zero. So you can have that, or you can have this. You can have this. The Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. This self-control manual itself is 244 pages of self-control. Just in the self-control unit. This will help you learn how to control your emotions. This will help you learn how to to keep those pent-up emotions under control. It'll also tell you why you should. It'll also tell you all the mechanisms of how to do it. It'll also show you all the consequences of not doing it. And believe it or not, you know, there's a chapter on anger in here, chapter 3. There's a chapter on anger right after emotions. Why is that? Because... Anger and STDs are tied in. Anger and STDs are tied in together. I told you, STDs in people's brains are causing people to do things extremely violent. Okay? But if we can learn how to control our urges through the peaceful solution, we won't get to that point. We'll learn how to manage our anger. We'll learn how to control our anger. It's called anger management for a reason. Okay? These behaviors lead to rage and anger. Okay? These sleeping around that they're showing you in Hollywood, they're not showing you what it's causing. We're showing you what it's causing. Let's go to the next slide here. So it says on uh, page 55, Matters of the Heart, here's a few simple ways that you can uh, stop and think about the consequences of premarital sex. Remember the stop, think, options, proceed. Number one, do not intentionally try to attract someone's attention. You might get more attention than you bargained for. That might lead to being abused or raped. That is a fact. Uh, they showed, I remember, and I'm not picking on the women because men do it too, but I'm just showing that we have to protect the women. We have to protect our daughters because there was a video footage of a, a in Walmart parking lot where it showed a man stalking. He was looking for who he could, who he could uh, abduct. And who did he go after? It was the one that was dressed in skimpy shorts and a halter top. Okay. He knew he could lure her in, you know, where the other women that were walking by that weren't dressed like that wouldn't have been that simple. He just knew it. It's kind of like a predator seeking out the weaker animal. You know, did you know that, that uh, men are like wolves? Predators, child predators, and even female predators, uh, uh, men that stalk women, they're the same way. They watch for weaknesses in children They'll sit in the shopping mall and they'll watch children and their parents walk by and they'll see uh, if a child rolls his eyes at his parents or he wanders off from his parents or, you know, he shows any kind of disrespectful behavior toward that authority. That, to the predator, is a weak animal. Just like a wolf watches for the weak animal so he can take him out of the herd, the child predator is looking for the weak child the one that's rebellious, the one that, that doesn't listen, the wanders off. They do the same thing. Men do the same thing. <clears throat> so just you just need to know that that's how things go. Let's look at the slide again. It says, do not be alone with someone of the opposite sex. Girls, you put yourself at risk for being forced into sex. Boys, you put yourself at risk for being falsely accused. And both of you put yourselves at risk for doing something you will regret. You will regret. You will regret. Underline the word will. Because remember, they don't think, oh, that won't occur. I won't regret it. This is going to feel so so good. How could I regret that? How could something so good or how could something so wrong feel so right? Isn't that what the song said? 
<laughs> oh, well, you better you better get past the feeling and start going by facts. The fact is, if you do these things, you are going to get an STD, an unwanted pregnancy, or some kind of consequence. It is a fact. You will not get around it. I don't care how smart you think you are, how educated you are. You're not going to get away with it. None of us got away with it. None of us did. Okay? Let's go to the, the slide again. Number three. Be determined in your mind and keep focused on all the positive goals that you want in life. Catching an STD or becoming pregnant will prevent you from reaching your goals. Think about that. Catching an STD or becoming pregnant will prevent you from reaching your goals. And everybody should have goals, you know, but that's the thing about the peaceful solution. You don't even know about goals and goal setting and purpose without learning the peaceful solution for the most part. So... That's why, you know, the Peaceful Solution is such a beautiful program. You know, we've gone through almost five books now that lay the foundation of moral character in a child's mind in the intermediate series, in, a, in, the, in adolescents' minds. The knowledge that's contained in these books that's being put in their mind, it's, it's life-saving to them. You know, if they actually use it, it's life-saving to them. But without this knowledge... Man, they're like a bunch of little a little, bunch of little sheep wandering to the slaughter, man. They have no clue what's what's waiting for them. They're going to think what they're seeing in Hollywood is normal and they're going to go ahead and just do what the herd is doing. And they're all going to go to the slaughter. Okay? It's just a fact. Monkey see, monkey do. What we need to do is 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 educate people in the peaceful solution and just show them, look, you know, the, and, and, you know, even if they didn't take all five books, you know, just these simple moral principles that they're learning in the program, you know, we've had people that come to the program for two or three classes. You know what? I've seen them 10 years later and they're like, man, I never forgot what I, I just had a, uh, a young lady, uh, email me, uh, from 17 years ago. She said, I took your class in 2007, and I have not forgotten one thing that you taught. I hadn't heard from her in 17 years. I just got it last week. There's people here that can attest to it. I didn't even know if she was still alive. I didn't even remember who she was until I saw the name, and I was like, okay, I remember who she was. But... This is the impact the peaceful solution has on people's lives, okay? And never underestimate the work that you're doing. You're coming here and learning how to teach this program. You are not wasting your time, okay? You are not wasting your time because not only is it helping you, you're going to have the power to give life to other people through this, to rescue them from the slaughter that they're all going to right now because they're being taught that this is all normal behavior by Follywood. Let's go to the final. Uh, <clears throat> so, the final part in matters of the heart, and I'm sure Katan, I think he's the next teacher. He'll probably even want to want to uh, elaborate and, and cl clean up some of my uh, back cleanup for me, or whatever you want to call it. Put in his, you know, uh, input because I'm sure he has some things he could add to it that'll, you know, I'm always amazed when I listen to the teachers because. I, get, I love getting different perspectives from people, and uh, I'm sure you all do too. So it says, does this sound old-fashioned? Maybe so, but where is it written that being old-fashioned is wrong? There's nothing wrong with protecting yourself from risky behavior that could leave you emotionally scarred. You know, think about an old-fashioned iron. <laughs> you, ne you, you only had one iron back then. You never had to replace it. Okay? You drop that iron, you could throw it, you could you could drop you could you could crush it with a hammer, you could the iron didn't break. What's wrong with old fashioned? You remember those old fashioned you remember the cars from the seventies with the steel bumper? Man, they were real steel cars, man. You know, you could back into a you know, nowadays this plastic stuff they got, you back into something crack. 
you know, you're paying uh, you know two thousand dollars to replace a fiberglass. Back then, you bumped into something with that steel bumper, you broke the wall, but your bumper was like came out shining, you know. I mean, what's wrong with old fashioned? Old fashioned worked. And, w and don't forget the Quaker oats, the old fashioned Quaker oats. <laughs> Those are great too, right? But uh, don't. There's nothing wrong with the old fashioned. Old fashioned is what keeps us out of trouble. Remember, old fashioned means go back before the sexual revolution, where they still had some morals. So, over one million young unmarried women every year in the U.S. alone get pregnant or have sex only to get dumped by their boyfriends. Avoid the regrets and consequences that come from the irresponsible choice. Make wise decisions and be responsible to yourself. And be responsible to that person that you, that you care about, that you think you love, and that you want to spend your life with. Think about them. Truly show them. You know, they'll, they'll actually, if you do keep your hands to yourself, at first they might think you're gay or something. I don't know. That's okay. But, you know, later on, it's kind of like our parents. You know how they used to correct us, and we didn't like the correction at first? But now when you look back on it, you're like, man, I'm so thankful that they corrected me, that they loved me enough to tell me those things. That girl or that young man is going to think the same thing about you if you do that for them. Okay? So don't, so don't uh, never put the peaceful solution in practice. So the next class will be the, uh, let's see, February 25th at five, uh, 2024. We'll get the year right. Uh, at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, Katan should be our next teacher. And thank you, and everybody have a great evening.